The question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr. Speaker. I call the Honourable David Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, th this bill does make a minor change to tax uh, rules, which will be beneficial overall to the New Zealand uh, uh, commercial community. I would note that I wouldn't want to overstate the importance of it. I think that's um, belied by the fact that this was reported back by the Select Committee on the 9th of May last year, and it didn't make up the audit paper before the election. And, uh, so it's hardly the most important piece of business in terms of the, uh, the future of the New Zealand economy. I'll make one or two comments. I do agree uh, with the um, Minister of Revenue that it's important that we don't encourage New Zealand uh, ownership of offshore operations to be undermined by uncompetitive tax rates in New Zealand on overseas income. If we do that, we do create a perverse incentive for those companies to move their operations from New Zealand to a low tax jurisdiction, and we have to, we have to guard against that. If we're looking uh, then at areas where we have residual concern, I think more work needs to be done in respect of offshore royalty income. The Labour Party took to the last election a proposal that we consider whether there should be a reduction in tax on royalty earned by intellectual property rich companies based in New Zealand. Those companies, more than any other company almost, can base themselves in just about any other jurisdiction in, in the world because they're not reliant on manufacturing facilities in New Zealand, they're not reliant on New Zealand land for production of primary produce. They can locate themselves where it is most beneficial to their shareholders. And we need to take care that if we want to encourage the growth of some of those clever technology companies, that we don't encourage their early transition out of New Zealand in order to chase a lower tax rate on their royalty income. And I heard from uh, uh, one of the accountants who acts, uh, one of the senior partners of a, uh, one of the Auckland um, accounting firms, I won't name the firm to identify the individual, but he acts for many of the technology, uh, successful technology companies, and I went to see him in the course of my responsibilities as then spokesperson for Labour on Economic Development and asked him what changes he thought were necessary in New Zealand to stimulate the growth of that sector, and he thought that a uh, review of the treatment of royalty um, taxation on royalty income from intellectual property rights held by New Zealand companies in respect of the offshore operations uh, was necessary, which is why we took that to the election. So uh, I think that's unfinished business, uh, uh, Minister, and I would hope that um, that is uh, under consideration by the Department. One area uh, where I disagree uh, with the uh, import of this legislation, and the Labour Party, notwithstanding that opposition, will be supporting the legislation because overall it's good legislation, is the uh, removal of the approved issuer levy. Uh, the minority report from the Labour Party in the report back from the Select Committee, I've just lost my notes here, um, uh, noted that uh, we had submissions from a number of uh, submitters that the proposals outlined which reduce the revenue to the Crown uh, will not, in their opinion, help increase liquidity of loans flowing into New Zealand. And there's no other reason to do this. Why should we be reducing the tax burden of uh, effectively overseas lenders into New Zealand if there's going to be no difference in liquidity or lower interest rates in New Zealand? Already the uh, overseas uh, lenders to New Zealand face a very low tax burden compared with a domestic uh, earner of interest in New Zealand. So if interest is paid to a non-resident uh, by a New Zealand enterprise, the non-resident withholding tax rate is much lower than is paid by a resident. And there's a reason for that there is an interest rate differential. One is the fact that if you're non-resident, you actually don't enjoy all of the services that we enjoy if you're a resident. You don't get health, you don't get you know, a share of health services, you don't get education services. So in a fairness sense, you wouldn't expect them to be saying, paying as high a rate of tax. But 
It is also true that they do get the benefit of a stable democracy and the things that are paid for by taxation. And so they should be paying some taxation on the interest that is earned from uh, New Zealand um, uh, borrowers, be they corporate or private borrowers. Now, already in New Zealand, we've granted increasing exemptions over the years to reduce the tax burden, uh, or the tax, I shouldn't call it the tax burden, the tax paid by um, uh, those overseas lenders into New Zealand who are earning interest from their investments in New Zealand. And we've done that by exempting people from non-resident withholding tax, uh, which they've been able to get around through, uh, and the Minister can tell me if I've got this wrong, but through the approved issue a levy process. So if they come through the approved issue a levy route, they can on occasions avoid non-resident withholding tax. Already the, um, the, the, the substitute, if you like, for non-resident withholding tax, the approved issue a levy, is at considerably lower rates, not only than the tax that would be paid by a New Zealander being paid interest if they're a resident in New Zealand, but also lower than non-resident withholding tax rate. And yet the proposal here is that rather than move to sort of equalise that and perhaps garner a bit more revenue to the Crown, and you know the government's running an enormous deficit at the moment, needs to get some money from somewhere, as well as trim its expenditure and grow the economy, uh, needs some more revenue, why would we be giving revenue away through abandoning the small amount of revenue that we get from the approved issuer levy rather than actually making it more robust? And I don't think that would be causing an unfairness. Now, if, that, if we have um, substantial evidence that there would be threats to ne the, the ability of New Zealand to fund its offshore borrowing requirements or for our, our banks and other um, corporate borrowers to, to, uh, to fund their borrowings, then maybe there would be a substantial case for reducing the cost of overseas borrowers through uh, taxes and, and approved issuer levies. But there's no, that case hasn't been made out. And so for that reason, the Labor Party is critical of this part of the legislation, which effectively, again, seems to serve um, the interests of the big, end, the big end of town uh, to the detriment of the New Zealand tax base, and yet there doesn't seem to be a proven need to do it. Uh, rather that, we would have thought that there would be a, 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 um, a desire to get an appropriate balance be between those different actors in the economy who pay tax. And plainly, the people who invest money in New Zealand get an interest benefit from the interest that is paid by New Zealanders. They do get a benefit from New Zealand. They in part get that because of the things that New Zealand funds through taxes that are collected, you know, an educated population uh, who can work and afford to and, um, and be productive and therefore afford to pay interest to those overseas lenders into New Zealand. They're benefiting from police. They're benefiting from the enforcement of the rule of law that means that their money or their contracts are enforceable in New Zealand and they'll get repaid. These are all things that are sustained by the New Zealand um, institutions which are in part funded um, by uh, taxation and I think it's fair that we expect the recipients of those rewards, those interests that's being paid from New Zealand to those overseas people should bear a tax burden. And yet this legislation goes in the opposite direction, not that it was a heavy burden through the approved issue of levy, but rather than actually uh, trying to equalise things uh, in a way that is fair, it's just said, oh look, we'll just give up and we won't charge any. I don't think that's good policy, I don't think it stands scrutiny, and that's why the Labour Party has opposed this part of the bill, which is the removal of the approved issuer levy. Mr Speaker, I'm just about run out of time. I would say in closing that if we want to get the investment signal right into New Zealand businesses, it's much more important that we do things like get a neutral tax signal through a capital gains tax so that people invest on the basis of the profitability of the uh, investment rather than the tax treatment of it. And if it's good enough for the Minister of Revenue to come here and say that it's important that we have these changes in order to have a, a, a relatively level playing field about where people invest overseas, why can't we have similar logic applied to our tax system in New Zealand so that we encourage 
the more productive use of capital in New Zealand to discourage the overinvestment in the speculative sector and encourage investment in the productive sector. And through that, we would reduce our current account deficit and, and get wealthier, as well as improve the tax base. Mr Speaker. I call the Honourable Member Simon Bridges. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The taxation